This week we're talking about the brain's blood supply and we spent a lot of time talking about how the anterior or carotid artery supply meets up with the posterior or vertebral artery supply on the ventral surface of the forebrain. So that's depicted here as the circle of Willis where you have the potential for compensatory blood flow both right to left and also from the posterior supply to the anterior supply regions of the brain. So I thought it might help to visualize this vasculature if we made it out of pipe cleaners. I've never done this before, but we'll see how it goes. I made a couple ahead of time as I was playing around with this. They sort of look like alien face huggers, but that's what more or less yours is going to look like when you're all done. So let's walk through this process together and we'll see how we can make these little critters and how they relate to this vasculature that we're talking about. So you should have six pipe cleaners of one color, probably red, three of another, they were often green, and then a couple of other uh, random colors, usually have at least one white. So let's start off with taking two of our reds. This will represent the vertebral arteries. And I'll show that right here. The vertebral arteries coming up through the foramen magnum, fusing on the midline right at the point of the pons, and then traveling over the pons as the basilar artery, and then splitting um, anteriorly as the right and left posterior cerebral arteries. So let's make that first. To do that, take two of your red pipe cleaners, or whatever you have uh, six of, and then pinch it just about at a width of a hand, and then you can start to twist. This will be the meeting of the vertebrals to form the basilar. So give that several twists. Okay, twist, twist, twist. And then that'll be about three finger widths. So the vertebrals are represented here. This is the basilar. And then at the top, it branches from basilar to form the two posterior cerebral arteries here. Okay, so that's a good start, just like so. Next, let's grab these uh, three of the same color, probably green for you, and we'll make the cerebellar arteries. The anterior most or superior most is the superior cerebellar artery, which is depicted right here, just below the ocular motor nerve, the third cranial nerve. So we're going to attach that just at the top of our basilar artery twists. And spin that over the basilar a couple of times just to secure it in place. And voila, you've got your superior cerebellar arteries, which will come around to the uh, dorsal surface of the brainstem and cover over top of the cerebellum and supply the cerebellum superiorly. Next, we can add the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, and that comes off the basilar close to... Um, the base of the basilar near where the uh, vertebrals join together. So we're going to add that right about here in our pipe cleaner model. Okay, so to do that once again, just pinch it at that location at about the midpoint and bend that over a couple of times. Wrap it around a couple of times, rather. There, that's your anterior inferior cerebellar and again that's going to head around the lateral sides of the brainstem, the medulla just below the pons and then supply the cerebellum on that side on both sides actually 
And we're not done with the cerebellar blood supply. We have one more to add. And in this case, you're going to take your final green pipe cleaner or whatever that color was where you had three of them, cut it in half. And these branches actually come off of the right and left vertebral arteries, as you can see in the drawings right here. So in this case, we're going to want them to attach right about here on the vertebrals. Twist that on. That's one. And here on the other side, I'm going to add that one. So these are the posterior, inferior cerebellar arteries. So Three cerebellar branches, superior, anterior, inferior, posterior, inferior, vertebrals coming up, forming the basilar, and then splitting here to become the posterior cerebral arteries. What we've made so far represents this posterior incoming arterial supply, right? But it communicates with the incoming anterior blood supply through the carotid arteries via these posterior communicating arteries. We're going to represent them with one of your single colored uh, pipe cleaners. You can just use the white if you've got one. I'm going to cut posterior communicating arteries at about three finger widths. So use scissors, nail clippers, whatever you have. And these posterior communicating arteries come off of the um, or attached to the posterior cerebral arteries right at about these locations here. So I'm going to take this white pipe cleaner, wrap it around here just a couple of times. Okay, so that's one and two. Doesn't have to be perfect, although I know you Students always make these things perfect. Okay, here we go. So this is a path of potential flow, but often these communicating branches are really quite small because the pressure is even between the incoming posterior and anterior supplies and right to left in the brain as well. So there's often not a need to have any flow through these communicating arteries. Next, let's take a couple of our reds and make the uh, incoming carotids, which also then continue on primarily as the middle cerebral arteries going in the sylvian fissure here to supply most of the lateral and deep surface of the brain. So for that, we're going to depict this incoming carotid, a little bend here, and then attach it right about here to the uh, posterior communicating artery. Okay, so that's one side. These are pretty easy to do. Again, bend your incoming carotid, depicted like this, and then wrap this around a couple times. Good. There. Excellent. All right. So then you want to take your last two long red ones and make these the anterior cerebral arteries, which also are um, part of this incoming anterior supply through the carotids. So we're going to attach it right here. So that's one. And then attach the other one 
I like to attach it just before the, uh, the white pipe cleaner representing the posterior communicating. But you can attach it however you want there. Doesn't really matter. Good. Now they come together and will travel up between the right and left frontal lobes here, or, or cerebral hemispheres. And so the, to pick that, put a, a little bend like so. Can you picture that going between the hemispheres there? Okay. And we do have a small uh, communicating artery providing a potential flow from right to left between the anterior cerebrals right here. So you can take just a little bit of your remaining white pipe cleaner and create a small anterior communication right between the right and left sides there. Okay. Really, this is just a couple millimeters as you'll see in the uh, sheep brain and human specimens. Good. So there's your anterior communicating artery. Anterior, middle, and posterior cerebrals. Superior, anterior, inferior, posterior, inferior cerebellars. Excellent. Now, if we're going to map this onto a lateral view of the brain, again, these are figures from your text that I've just blown up, um, like double their original size. You could see that the basal artery would be right here. The circle of Willis would be right here on the undersurface or ventral surface of the brain. The middle cerebral is coming Sort of right at you and then going to curve around the brain which would be up here the anterior cerebrals are going to bend around the corpus callosum as you can see here and go between the cerebral hemispheres to supply the medial surface of the cerebral hemispheres like so get you out of the ventricle the posterior cerebral is going to come right here towards the occipital lobe, just above the cerebellum. The superior cerebellar is going to come right here over the superior surface of the cerebellum. And then the anterior and posterior inferior cerebellars go to the cerebellum as well. Of course, blood supply to your spinal cord is important as well. So let's add the anterior spinal artery. So we're putting Willis back here on our figure and the anterior spinal artery has two branches that come off the tops of the vertebrals just before the vertebrals fuse to become the basal artery and then they come together and then head down the anterior surface of the spinal cord to supply that surface so that's this region here in the figure so to do that grab uh, whatever remaining pipe cleaner you have left and just uh, cut a couple of inches. And these will attach anywhere between where the posterior inferior cerebellars came off and before the um, basal artery starts. So we can wrap that a couple of times around this guy here. one of them is the other All right. again doesn't have to be perfect but these two do fuse together to form a midline interior spinal artery so you can twist it just like you twisted your vertebrals to become the basilar that's represent it here got this 
twisted here. Here we go. Okay. Nice. Anterior spinal artery. Good. Now, <clears throat> if you're going to make this accurate in terms of what this would all look like if you sort of grabbed it and pulled it off the ventral surface of the brain, remember these anterior cerebrals would curve around the corpus callosum and come like this. So let's just bend yours to try to show that curvature. Okay, the middle cerebrals are going to come through the sylvian fissure and curve around and have branches going to um, important language centers on the left. But the frontal, parietal, and temporal lobes out on the lateral surface, so that's represented by this curvature here. The posterior cerebrals are going to go to the occipital lobes, so that's represented by some curve like this. Is it forming a 3D shape for you? And then likewise, the cerebellars are all going to curve around so that they come over the lateral surfaces of the medulla and pons and supply the cerebellum. So that's this curve here. So that's how that maps on there. And I did the same thing for these other couple that we did before. Excellent. 